Hi guys, Adam McCubbin here. Just doing a video update today on training frequency and if more is necessarily better. I've said this before, you're only as good as you're able to recover. So if you're giving yourself uh, increased volume, increased intensity, increased frequency of, of training sessions and you're not recovering, then you're doing yourself a disservice and you're possibly moving away from the, the goals that you're trying to work towards. However, on the other side of the, of the coin, if you are actually recovering and you're sleeping and you're getting the right nutrition and your hormones and everything are working in conjunction, then your results are going to be favorable. The sad thing is with a lot of people that do group exercise classes is they don't get taught and they don't understand the recovery aspect of training and they think more is always better. If they're doing five spin classes a week, they think six is going to be better. And then they keep thinking, okay, six is going to be better, then we'll do seven and then we'll start doing two a day. Now from an energy, stand, energy balance standpoint, this can be true. You can burn uh, the extra, extra calories that, that, are, that are getting eaten. You can lose weight from this, but there's a strong possibility that you can be running yourself down and you can be moving closer to, to sickness. You can have planned periods where you functionally overreach, which is a term that means you push yourself to an extreme level of fatigue with the foresight that you are going to, to recover and take the actual time to adapt to that training stimulus. Now, it's, you can't just simply think, okay, I'll just keep training and I'll keep trying to push myself to that level of extreme fatigue because that's not going to happen. You're going to get sick and you're going to run yourself down. D depending on your training level is how much recovery you will need to take. For example, beginners don't need to focus so much on recovery as, as a strategy because they will adapt to whatever it is you, you're, you're doing in the gym and you recover very quickly. Now there's obviously a, a point where it becomes ridiculous and you won't recover, but generally speaking, but beginners adapt and recover really well from training. Now it's when you become an intermediate and advanced that you need to really think about and plan your recovery because the, the load and the ability for your body to produce force and to get yourself tired is actually greater when you've, you're more experienced. And that is why beginners will yield greater results and percentage increases, whether it's decrease in body fat percentage, whether it's an increase of strength, they're, they're gonna be far more dramatic than intermediate. People who've been working out or training for two to three, three years, their, their results aren't gonna be as big from a percentage standpoint because you're not gonna be able to recover and the beginners are coming from a, from a lower base. The thing that needs to be remembered with, with results and with training is what has taken someone from say 25 or 30% body fat and then has taken them to 15% body fat. So moving from point A to point B isn't necessarily going to get them to point C. The diet plan, the training and, and everything factored in together the law of diminishing returns, unfortunately, with training, the percentage increase of effort, adjustments to lifestyle, nutrition, everything is, is much greater in terms of the effort that is required. So don't get sold the dream without first understanding the reality. When you improve your training plan, your recovery strategies, your nutrition, it all needs to change. What has taken you to one point won't necessarily take you to the next point. I hope this video has been of some use and given you some insights. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Thanks for your time.